I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Milk Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And today is part of our ongoing series of how to use on-farm culture to improve mastitis treatments. I'm going to be talking about reading our plates, and today I'm going to be discussing how to identify gram-negative bacteria. Gram-negative bacteria include a very large number of organisms, and those organisms include bacteria such as E. coli, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, and others. These gram-negative organisms are often the most commonly identified cause of clinical mastitis, especially on larger dairy farms. Now the methods that we use for on-farm culturing cannot conclusively identify the genus. In other words, we can't necessarily determine if we've got E. coli, Klebsiella, or Enterobacter, but the methods that we do use can divide them into broad groups based on how they utilize nutrients in the gram-negative agar, that McConkie agar. And so we often divide these organisms into groups called lactose positive or lactose negative. Lactose positive simply means that when these organisms grow on the gram-negative agar, the McConkie agar, the colony either ferments lactose and turns pink, or it doesn't ferment lactose and it stays that whitish yellow color. All right, let's talk about the characteristics of gram-negative bacteria on our on-farm culture plates. Now, gram-negative bacteria are unique because they're the only group of organisms that grow on the McConkie's agar, that clearer agar that we've included in some of these plates. If they're lactose positive, they would be bacteria like E. coli or Klebsiella. The lactose negative don't turn pink and they remain somewhat yellow or whitish and we would typically say those aren't E. coli or Klebsiella, but we can't get into a deeper diagnosis. For the, for the other organisms. Now if you're using a biplate, the gram-negative bacteria will grow on either blood auger and McConkie's, but they won't grow on a factor media. So here's an important distinction. If you're using a biplate, you need to know what your red auger is. If it's blood auger, you'll get growth on both sides of the plate. If it's a factor media on that red side, you'll get growth only on the grim negative side of the plate. Make sure you ask your supplier. On a triplate, a normal triplate, the gram negative bacteria will grow only on the McConkie's agar. If growth is observed on both the McConkie's agar and a gram positive specific media, such as a factor media, what that tells us is the sample is likely contaminated. And on the quad plates, the plates with four different types of agar, gram-negative bacteria will grow on blood agar and McConkie, but not on the other medias. So when we're talking about identification of gram-negative bacteria, the key thing is growth on the McConkie media. So these gram-negative bacteria will grow on McConkie's, They'll grow on blood auger, but they won't grow on factor media, and they won't grow on strep media. Now, identification of gram-negative bacteria is important because they behave a little bit differently than some of our other bacteria. About a third of the gram-negative cases will result in severe mastitis that requires immediate therapy. However, the other two-thirds are usually mild and moderate, and these are a group of organisms that we often don't recommend the use of antibiotic therapy. If you'd like more details on how to treat gram-negative bacteria, review our videos on managing mastitis, the pathogen series. We've got a video on both E. coli and a video on Klebsiella. Music